police launch investigation into past president remarks. MOE assures no race will be marginalized in educational opportunities. Good afternoon and salam Malaysia Madani. Thanks for joining us. I'm Mohana Priya and you're watching Updates at Noon. Small, medium and micro entrepreneurs must grab the opportunity of online business prospects in line with the development of 5G technology. Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zaid Hamidi said entrepreneurs should seize the chance to take advantage of the export market, which is seen to be growing very rapidly. Begitu juga dari segi sokongan ekspor kepada para usahawan, kita dapati bahawa ekspor PMKS telah meningkat pada tahun 2020 yang ketika itu bernilai 117.8 bilion pada tahun 2020. Ianya terus meningkat kepada 124.3 bilion dan ini merupakan satu perkembangan yang baik dan saya yakin ia akan terus berkembang. He said this in a speech when officiating the National Entrepreneur Week MUN and National Level Micro Small to Medium Entrepreneur Week 2023. Datuk Sri Dr. Ahmad Zahid also hoped that more entrepreneurs are helped so that they can compete at the international level, which will ultimately increase national exports and prepare them for a potential global expansion. MUN and PMKS Week has recorded 120,000 attendees and total sales sales amounting to 1.96 million ringgit as well as potential sales of around 51.61 million ringgit. 133 cases related to comments on social media containing issues related to religion, royalty and race, or 3R, have been recorded this year. According to Deputy Communications and Digital Minister Theo Ni Ching, 95 of them are currently being investigated by police. The Ministry, along with the Malaysian Communications and Multimedia Commission, MCMC, as well as the Royal Malaysia Police, will continuously monitor social media comments touching on sensitive issues, especially ahead of the upcoming state elections. Agencies under the Communications and Digital Ministry, such as Cybersecurity Malaysia, will also lend their support in the technical field. Untuk bulan Januari sampai lah bulan Mei, uh, itu statistik setakat Mei sahaja, uh, untuk lah case ya, uh, ya komen komen ya yang melibatkan institusi diraja yang telah dibuka file oleh PDRM adalah sebanyak 14 kes. Dan untuklah uh, posting ataupun uh, di Facebook, ini hanya untuk Facebook. Eh? Okay, statistik ini tentang Facebook sahaja. Posting yang telah dibuka file oleh PDRM yang uh, menyentuh isu perkawaman adalah sebanyak 9 kes. Dan 15 kes adalah tentang posting yang berunsur agama. Dan juga selain daripada itu, masih ada 95 kes yang uh, bersifat lain-lain yang sedang di, disiasat dan telah dibuka file oleh PDRM. Parties and candidates in the upcoming state elections are reminded to not touch on the 3R issues and manipulate the emotions of the riot. Now, the police confirmed that past President Tan Sri Abdul Hadi Awang is being investigated for his recent remarks that allegedly touch on the three R sensitivities. Bukit Aman Criminal Investigation Department or CID Deputy Director for Forensics and Strategic Planning, Datu S. Suresh Kumar, said the statement is believed to be made through a post on Abdul Hadi's Facebook on 8th July and published in a local news portal on the same day. The past president claimed that DAP intends to retain the meaning of Islam in the federal constitution based on the colonialists' interpretation, which upholds liberalism and freedoms espoused by the West. 
The investigation is being conducted by the Classified Crime Investigation Unit, Division D5, CID Bukit Aman, under Section 4, Subsection 1 of the Sedition Act 1948 and Section 233 of the Communications and Multimedia Act 1998. Suresh Kumar advised the public not to make any speculations that could interfere with the investigation process. He added stern action will be taken against any party that threatens public order and national security. Security. A poster that went viral on social media claiming that the government had agreed that employees, provident fund or EPF contributors who have reached the age of 55 can only withdraw their savings on a monthly basis is not true. Communications and Digital Minister Fahmi Fadzil said he had verified the information with EPF Chief Executive Officer Datuk Sri Amir Hamza and asked the EPF to provide a full explanation. He explained that the matter was still in the study stage and EPF had no intention of applying the policy to existing contributors at present. Recently, a poster went viral on WhatsApp and other social media platforms that the government had agreed for EPF to allow contributors who had reached the age of 55 to only withdraw their savings on a monthly basis. EPF had issued an official denial on its official social media platforms with an explanation of the true facts. Meanwhile, Fahmi said in this regard, the Rakyat must approach the Madani community, which has an important role to play in ensuring that matters are referred to the relevant authorities so that a full and clear statement can be made. The Madani community is also a platform to explain and fight issues, slander and the spread of fake news. The Education Ministry is constantly improving the existing education quota system to ensure even non-Bumiputra students will get proper access to further their studies. Minister Fadlina Siddiq said that although the government maintains the Malay and Bumiputra quota system, opportunities in education should also be given to students of other races. She said this after officiating the closing of the National Level Innovation and Robotics Competition in Kulim yesterday. Previously, the Prime Minister in the Temu Anwar program at University Uttara Malaysia, Sinto, explained that the Malay and Bumiputra quota system in education needs to be maintained to balance the number of students of different races in institutions of higher learning, IPT. On another note, Fadlina said the programs offered by vocational colleges under the Ministry of Education had achieved encouraging success as the marketability of graduates is currently at over 90%. Coming up, two people killed in bus and car collision. Stay tuned. Two people were killed in an accident involving a bus and a car at kilometre 285.5 of the Plus Highway near Nilai earlier this morning. Seven others were reported to have sustained serious injuries. The Negeri Sembilan Fire and Rescue Department confirmed that 22 victims were involved in the accident. The deceased were the bus driver and one passenger who was an Indonesian woman. 13 other victims with minor injuries were sent to the hospital Tuan Kujafa Emergency Unit in Sremban for medical attention. The two victims in the car are safe. The bus was on its way from Singapore to Kuala Lumpur. The cause of the accident is still being investigated and the process of cleaning and debris removal at the scene were fully completed at about 10.15 a.m. The accident involved in a massive traffic jam which spanned over six kilometres. Any vandalism activity involving buildings gazetted as historical heritage buildings is being monitored by the Malacca City Council MBMB. This includes buildings around Banda Hile, such as the Stadais, Kota A. Famosa, St. Paul Hill and several areas in Jonker Street. MBMB enforcement authorities have been stationed at the aforementioned areas to curb vandalism activities such as scribbles and graffiti on the walls of historical buildings. These are part of MBMB's efforts ahead of Visit Malacca Year 2024.
Cakat hari ni ada tetapi agak minor lah. Ya, yeah, minor. Ada tetapi minor. Ha, macam contoh dia mencunting, ha, konon dia tulis I was here. Ha, tapi dia tak sedar yang bahawa dia cunting itu adalah kawasan heritage ataupun tempat peninggalan yang kita perlu uh, pelihara. Ya, yeah, ha, macam contoh di kota Famosa itu sendiri. Ha, kadang-kadang kan kalau perasan ada orang tulis dengan pensel I was here dan sebagainya. Ha, tetapi kita sekarang ni kita dalam proses untuk nak uh, menambah baik uh, yang mana kita akan pastikan uh, kawasan tersebut tidak di vandalism ini tidak berlaku. MBMB through the Heritage Department is constantly working towards a restoration and upgrading of gazetted historical buildings without affecting the authenticity. The Madani Afiat program is the government's approach to bring the services of the Ministry of Health directly to the community to raise awareness on health issues, especially in Slango. Menteri Besar Datuk Sri Amiruddin Shari said Slango was chosen to be the first location for the people to undergo health screening to curb diseases. Okay, aspek kesihatan awam dan pencegahan masalah kesihatan yang uh, dilibatkan bersama-sama masyarakat. Ada beberapa agensi ataupun unit seperti Kombi, uh, Hero uh, dan sebagainya. Dan di pihak kerajaan negeri kita ada suka ataupun suka relawan kesihatan dan pelbagai yang lain. Dan itu hanyalah sebagai katalis kepada usaha-usaha berterusan kita supaya masyarakat secara keseluruhan perlu terlibat sama. Dan saya ingat ini lesson learn yang paling besar ketika COVID-19 bagaimana semua masyarakat participate dan terlibat dalam aktiviti penjagaan kesihatan awam untuk diri mereka dan juga akan bagi efek pada yang lain. He said this after launching the Madani Afiat program at Batu Caves, Gomba. Also present at the event was Health Minister Dr. Zaliha Mustafa. The initiative was to detect and prevent the risk of non-communicable diseases, NCD, in the community through various programs such as door-to-door health screenings, health affairs and gotong royong with the local community. The Agriculture and Food Security Ministry is ready to help prawn breeders amidst claims that they are suffering a severe drop in sales over the past two months due to the abundance of imported prawns. Deputy Minister Chan Fung Hin said the Fisheries Department and the Fisheries Development Authority of Malaysia, LKIM, would help affected farmers in terms of marketing. Lambakan udang ni, uh, saya rasa Jabatan Perikanan dan juga melalui LKIM uh, kita akan uh, melihat kepada isu ni dan uh, lepas tu saya rasa mereka akan respon kepada yang isu ni lah. Cuma uh, dari segi prinsip dia, memang kita tak ada halangan untuk uh, sebarang uh, import. Ini ini pertengahan yang bebas lah. Uh, cuma yang pentingnya sekali saya pun rasa untuk uh, pengusaha pengusaha untuk ternakan utang tempatan ni juga harus uh, melihat uh, kepada uh, macam mana cara mereka untuk memajukan daya saing mereka dan uh, saya rasa dari segi pihak uh, apa nama ini uh, panduan te- uh, ini teknikal TOF uh, uh, jabatan perikanan akan tolong he said this after officiating the closing ceremony of the Penang Farmer Fest 2023 at the Bukit Jambal Complex yesterday. Chan said the abundance of prawns can provide an advantage to consumers as it allows them to buy prawns at a reasonable price. On the foreign front, flash floods hit New York State, claiming at least one life. A slow-moving storm system brought heavy rain across a wide section of New York State on Sunday evening, flooding streets, prompting dozens of rescues for drivers whose vehicles were stranded on inundated roads and causing at least one death. The U.S. National Weather Service said the Hudson Valley was the most affected by the storm, with sections of the area getting between 5 and 8 inches of rain. 
Trooper Stephen V. Neville of the New York State Police described the search and rescue efforts on Sunday night as an all-hands-on-deck endeavor, saying that several bridges had collapsed and many roads were impossible. Parts of the Palisades Interstate Parkway, which is typically heavily traveled, were flooded and completely washed out. Stephen M. Newhouse, the Orange County executive, said that there had been one death related to the flooding. State Senator James Scofis, who represents Orange County, said that the victim was a woman in her 30s, though neither official had details on the cause of death or circumstances. Flash flood emergencies were issued for stretches of the state. Flash flood warnings were also in effect for Manhattan, the Bronx, Queens, Westchester, Clinton and Franklin counties on Sunday night. Meanwhile, China's Hubei province and Chongqing municipality undertook emergency flood responses yesterday as heavy rains swept those regions, unleashing deluges and triggering landslides. Central China's Hubei province has seen intermittent rainfall since noon on Friday, prompting local authorities to issue a red alert for heavy rain and activate an emergency flood response. From Friday noon, Yingshan County on the province's eastern border was lashed by downpours, with a maximum precipitation reaching 250.5 millimetres over 24 hours. To cope with a heavy downpour, local authorities promptly relocated residents, strengthened inspections in the flood-hit area and carried out flood control and drainage, emergency rescue and disaster relief work. In southwest China's Chongqing municipality, the country's most populous municipality, flood water got into some lanes and houses in its southwestern regions. In Heishui Township, heavy rain flooded many streets and some shops and affected the traffic of many expressways nearby, triggering a temporary traffic control in some sections. The heavy downpour also caused a landslide in Heishui village of the township. Wanzhou district in the northern region of the municipality through which the Yangtze River runs was also hit by floods due to the downpour on Friday. Argentina on Sunday inaugurated the first stage of a gas pipeline that will carry natural gas from the Vaca Muerta formation in western Argentina to Santa Fe province by way of Buenos Aires province, an essential work to reverse the country's significant energy deficit. Vaca Muerta, a massive shale formation the size of Belgium, located in Patagonia, is seen as a key to boosting the South American country's gas supplies and lessening the need for pricey imports. The completion of the first stage of the gas pipeline, which starts in Nukin province and reaches Buenos Aires province, adds 11 million cubic meters of gas per day. According to official estimates, with the new pipeline up and running, the country expects to reach net zero in its energy balance in 2024 and achieve a surplus in 2025. Vaca Muerta is the fourth largest shale oil reservoir in the world and the second largest shale gas reservoir. The reservoir holds 16 trillion barrels of oil, representing 94 years of domestic consumption in Argentina. Next, Verstappen bags another victory for Red Bull at the British Grand Prix. That and more coming up in sports. Kicking off our sports segment today, Sri Pahang FC have gained ground on second place Slango FC in the 2023 Super League table after beating the latter 1-0 at the Darul Magmo Stadium, Kuantan, yesterday evening. The goal by Filipino import Kevin Ingresso in the 50th minute was enough for the Tok Gajah squad to collect three valuable points. Right off the first whistle of the game, the Tok Gajah squad unleashed a barrage of attacks to tear down Selangor's defence line. However, the Red Giants lived up to the name and absorbed the continuous offensive plays by Fandi Ahmad's men until the first half whistle. Into the second half, Sri Pahang Snor Azam Aziz's shot inside Slango's box was denied by goalkeeper Samuel Somerville. However, Ingresso positioned himself just at the right moment to put the second ball into the net. 
Selangor tried their best to find an equaliser in the later stage of the game. However, the hosts prevailed. With the win, Sri Fahang now have 34 points in the pocket, on par with the Red Giant squad, with only goal difference separating the two sides. In another match, PDRM FC lost 2-0 to Kedah Darul Aman FC at the Pataling Jaya City Council Stadium in Klanajai last night. Both teams seemed to be equal in the first half, exchanging blows in their attempt to score an opening goal. Into the second half, however, it was apparent that Kedah had the upper hand in the match. The visiting side on multiple occasions almost scored a goal, but they were denied by PDRM goalkeeper Akil Raza. The opening goal of the match only came in the 79th minute when Kedah was awarded a spot kick after the ball hit PDRM's captain, James Okwasa's hand. Ifedayo Olu Segun stepped up and converted the penalty for the visitors and Lee Tuck added the second in stoppage time, also from a spot kick. Kedah are now fourth with 31 points, overtaking Sabah FC, who have 30 from 16 matches played. And in transfer news, Paris Saint-Germain have signed defender Lucas Hernandez from Bayern Munich on a five-year deal. The French 2018 World Cup winner joins Manuel Ugarte, Milan Skriniar, Marco Asensio and Lee Kang-in as Parc de France's newcomers since Luis Enrique's appointment as coach on Wednesday. The transfer fee has not been disclosed, but French media reported that PSG had paid Bayern a fee of 40 million euros plus add-ons for the 27-year-old. The France international made 107 appearances for the German league champions since his arrival in 2019. However, he only made seven appearances in the league games last season after suffering a cruciate ligament rupture injury at the World Cup that kept him sidelined for the remainder of the season. Hernandez will link up in defence with Slovakia captain Skirina, who joined on a free transfer the day after Enrique's unveiling as manager, with forward Asensio moving from Real Madrid. Former Barcelona and Spain boss Enrique has been quick to recruit as major doubts persist over the future of Kylian Mbappe. PSG must sell their superstar player in the current transfer window or likely lose him for nothing when his deal ends next season. Former Barcelona and Inter Milan midfielder Luis Suarez, the only Spanish-born men's footballer to have won the Ballon d'Or, has died at the age of 88. Suarez, who joined Barca in 1955, won the Ballon d'Or, football's most prestigious individual trophy, after claiming a League Cup and Cup double with the Catalan side in 1959. Suarez joined Inter in 1961, winning three Serie A titles, two European Cups and two Intercontinental Cups during his nine years in Milan. He also won 32 caps for Spain and was part of the squad which won the European Championship in 1964. After retiring from playing in 1973, Suarez went on to manage Inter, Deportivo La Coruña, Cagliari and SPAL. He also took charge of the Spanish national team between 1988 and 1991 leading them past the group stage of the 1990 World Cup. Moving on to Formula One news, Max Verstappen recovered from a slow start in British Grand Prix to deliver a record equaling 11th consecutive win for his Red Bull team and his sixth Formula One win in a row. The Dutchman came home almost four seconds ahead of McLaren's Lando Norris, who held off Mercedes' seven-time champion Lewis Hamilton in a thrilling finale. The race began in warm and dry conditions following light rain as Norris from second on the grid took advantage of a slow start by Verstappen. The Dutchman recovered his poise and swept past the Briton on lap 5 to lead. By lap 15, Verstappen's lead was 3.1 seconds as light drizzle began. For the back, Perez was carving through the field from 15th following his fifth consecutive qualifying flop. 
Leclerc was the first leading contender to pit after 19 laps, switching from medium to hard tyres and rejoining the 12th. It was a clear sign of spare performance capacity, as Verstappen responded with a series of fastest laps to stretch his lead to 6.5 seconds by half distance on lap 26 when Saints pitted for hards. Intriguingly, Verstappen and Hamilton were still on used softs, while Norris and Piastri took hards, as did Ferrari for the final 14 laps sprint. Norris was unimpressed with his team's cautious decision and reacted slowly when Verstappen darted clear. With 10 laps to go, Verstappen led by 3.2 seconds, while Perez climbed to 7th. It was Verstappen's 43rd career win and his 8th in 10 races this year, as he increased his lead ahead of teammate Sergio Perez to 99 points. Norris McLaren teammate, Australian rookie Oscar Piastri, finished 4th ahead of George Russell, Perez, two-time champion Fernando Alonso of Aston Martin and Williams' Alex Albon. And moving on to tennis, Andrei Rublev reached the quarterfinals in Wimbledon after dispatching Alexander Bublik 7-5, 6-3, 6-7, 6-7, 6-4 in five-set thriller. The world number seven was in firm control of the match after winning the opening two sets. However, Bublik claimed the third and fourth sets in the tie breaks before Rublev roared back to win after three hours and 17 minutes. Both players crushed the ball with unrelenting power, but two factors proved decisive. Bublik was unable to capitalize on any of the five break chances he had in the match, and several of Bublik's 14 double faults came at critical times. In the first set, he came unglued with back-to-back -back double faults to hand the set to the world number seven. The recent Hale champion also threw in a double fault at 30 all in the sixth game of the second set when he was decisively broken and again at 30 all in the eighth game of the fifth set, which gave Rublev a leg up to a 5-3 lead. After an extended rally, Bublik hit what he thought was a down-the-line backhand winner. However, Rublev somehow managed to run it down, slipping to the grass as he flicked a low forehand back into the middle of the court, leaving Bublik stunned and standing motionless. Rublev, who fired 20 aces to Bublik's 39, will next face the winner of seven-time champion Novak Djokovic and Poland's Hubert Hurkacz. And in the women's side, Iga Swatek's Wimbledon dream was hanging by the tiniest of threads as she faced two match points against Belinda Bensic. But the world number one came through the toughest of the tests to reach her first quarterfinal at the Grand Court Grand Slam. Her Swiss opponent proved a frustrating obstacle with Poland's four-time Grand Slam winner struggling to master the Olympic champion for the majority of what proved an intriguing tussle. While the Pole seemed untroubled early in the first set, winning 17 points in a row on serve and generating break points almost at will, her frustration levels started to mount as Bensic refused to yield. Her six break points in the first set included two set points. However, Bensic doggedly resisted and then raced into a 6-1 lead in the tie break, eventually closing it out when the world number one fired a forehand long. Bensic then saved a seventh straight break point in the first game of the second set. But on the very next point, she finally made one stick, guiding a forehand down the line to grab a first break of the match. Bensic broke back in the sixth game and then moved to the brink of victory with two match points on the Swatek serve at 6-5 in the second set. The pole saved both and then finally swung momentum in her favour as she dominated the tiebreak to level the match. It then got more comfortable for Swatek as Bensic dropped serve with a double fault to fall 3-1 behind, a deficit that she could not turn around. And with that, we reach the end of today's updates at noon. In our leading story for today, police launch investigation into past president remarks that touched on 3R issues. Do join us again tonight at 8.30 p.m. on TV1 and Salur and Bertha RTM for more news. Till then, Melissa, the Katya Padron, Penuki, Harapai.